Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 71. And if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 7, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet N and probability. Yeah, we want to talk about the relationship between increasing or decreasing the sample size and the probability we will calculate for the sampling distribution of X bar. Now this example here we did a couple videos ago. We have an insurance policy uh, where the population average is 792. The standard deviation for the population is 215. And we want to, within a margin of error of 40 bucks, calculate probability between some lower and upper. Remember, margin of error just means we take the mean, the one in the middle, and, and subtract 40 add 40, we get some interval, and then we want to calculate the probability that a sample mean would occur between those lower and upper values. And we're going to vary our n. Let's first calculate our standard error. Our standard error is going to be our sigma divided by square root of our n. So that's the variable we're going to be changing. So as we increase or decrease, we'll see what happens to standard error, and thus what happens to uh, probability. Now I'm going to close parentheses, and I forgot to lock this, so I'm going to click anywhere, as long as your cursor is flashing, touching some part of the cell reference, and then hit F4 to lock it. Control Enter. OK, so at 30, we have a standard error. That's the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x bar, about 40 bucks. As we copy down, oh, at 200, the spread in the sampling distribution of x bar gets uh, much smaller. So one standard deviation is about 15, whereas at, at n equals 200, and one standard deviation up here is uh, 40 bucks at n equals 30. Now let's calculate our lower and upper. That's just simply uh, mean, and I'm going to hit the F4 key, minus on the lower end our margin of error, F4. Tab equals mean F4 plus our margin of error F4. Control Enter. Now you can actually double click and send both of those down two different formulas at the same time. All right, so that's the lower and the upper. And what we want to do is our interval upper and lower values is going to stay constant, but our sample size is going to increase or decrease. So here's the probability we're trying to calculate. Probability that a sample we would take would fall between 752 and 832. Now, I added a little bit extra here, so we'll get the probability at n equals 30, probability at n equals 60, 70, 5, 200. Remember, n is what we're changing. That obviously affects the spread in our sampling distribution of x bar. You can already guess what's going to happen. If the spread is much less here, that means the probability is going to be higher. All right, so our probability, oh yeah, we get to use our norm.dist. Now, uh, you can use either, if you calculate your z, you can use norm.s.dist, but I have my two uh, x bars, so I'm just going to use norm.dist. Now, remember, the screen tip says x, but we know we can put an x or an x bar in there. We, if this was an x, this would be standard deviation for the population. If this is an x bar, standard error. All right, so our upper, remember for area, we're always calculating the upper first, comma, our mean, F4, our standard deviation, that's our standard error, that's varying for us, comma, and 1 for cumulative, all the way from negative infinity up to the big, the upper value minus x bar lower mean f4 standard deviation. That's our standard error, comma 1. We want cumulative from negative infinity to the low one. So we have two areas. We subtract them, and there's the probability. Not 69 cents. I'm going to home general or control shift tilde. Tilde is to the left of the number 1. Oh, look at that. Just as we would suspect, if the variation or standard deviation is bigger, then the probability between uh, an upper and a lower would be much lower. As we 
in uh, uh, the standard error decreases, the probability increases. Again, it's the n that's making the standard error decrease. So what that means is that your statements, right? If you take a random sample and get 850, 815, right, at n equal 30, you would be able to say, I'm 69% sure that our sample mean we calculated would lie within this interval. But if your sample size increased, then you get to say something like, I'm 99% sure. So as n increases, standard deviation for the sample distribution, standard error, decreases, and thus the probability increases. Now, that's uh, doing a calculation. Let's look at a picture. Now, I already made this little chart here. I'll show you. We, we've already made a bunch of charts like this. But let's just check this out. I'm, I have two plots here. And they're, everything's the same except for n, right? So I'm going to change this to 30. Now you can see the spread is exactly the same for both of them. Plot at 30, n equals. Oh, I should have changed that. It should say plot at n equals 30. So plot at n equals. In earlier videos, we saw how to make these fancy labels and uh, area charts and everything. All right, so now let's change this to 40. Oh, you can already see that it's the area. I mean, it's, it's less dispersion, so it's scrunched in, right? Let's change it to 50, to 60. You can see as we increase the sample size, the variation in the distribution is much smaller. And thus, for any particular two points, the area is going to be larger. That means our probability is larger. Let's move it up to 100. Let's move it up to 200, right? So if our you know, values were right here and right here, the area on the red one is much smaller than on the blue one. So our probability goes up as our sample size goes up. Now this chart here, you can remember from earlier videos, I'll just briefly show you. I went ahead and calculated, based on this data here, this is three standard deviations below the mean. And I created an x bar all the way to two, three standard deviations above. Then I calculated my standard error for each one of these. And I just made a, a little plot, just like we did in earlier videos, right? Plotted them both. Now, the only trick is, when you originally plot them, they all um, have the same transparency, which is 100%. So I selected this, Control-1. And under Fill, Solid, Fill, Solid, I just slid this box. Whoa. Why is it at 0? Oh, oh, I got it. I got it. So now it's at 0. So now I'm going to slide it up to like 60 or something. And you can pick whichever number you want, and then close. And so that's how you get it to be kind of translucent, which is uh, uh, handy there. All right, a picture tells a 1,000 words, or maybe 30 words there. All right, uh, one last video. We're going to talk about not x bar, but a proportion uh, p bar. All right, see you next video.